Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. Now we got some toying problems here. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to address some of these things here. Just, there's only one big major problem that I see. Um, and we'll get to it right now. Okay, guys, here's what we got. <laughs> I was farting around with mine. You know, I like to say I tore mine apart because... Uh, I was having some, um, I guess, erratic running issues with it, and I couldn't figure out why. Um, so the first thing I want to do is um, I want to do a timing uh, video real quick here to show you guys. Now they say, you see, I took my front gear off this, you know, whatever. But so when you put it together, okay, the lower, the, the timing marks are both pointed down from what they, they want it to be. Your little timing mark right there. Okay, that's top dead center. You see your your um, your pistons all the way to the top. Okay, when the timing mark's down, okay, that's your top dead center. All right, so, because I did mark mine before I took it off. Um, so that way I know how to put it back together. Because there's really no, <laughs> there's no other instructions for this thing. And, uh, so I was working on the oil, um, you know, leaking problem, and I stumbled across something here just tonight, actually. I was, like, totally had a really, really, really messed up day, and I uh, I was just kind of sitting here staring at this thing and shaking the day off. And uh, and I looked at the timing marks on the thing because I, I one of my uh, subscribers did shoot me a question on the timing mark, if it's on top or on the bottom, it's actually top dead center, not bottom dead center. So, anyways, here's the timing mark on the on your upper cam, okay? So, I was looking at mine now. I don't know if I told you guys before, the, the your rocker arms come loose on this thing, you know? And uh, so, you know, you got to tighten them down or put a little Loctite in there or something. But I don't know. I don't know if the Loctite's going to really work that well with all the heat it's got. So... Anyway, I'm sitting there staring at this thing, and I went to... Now, I don't know, you guys, how much room do you have in your, um, in your, you know, your followers there? Is it, does your cam, does your cam move at all? See, because my, my sprocket moves a little bit, but the cam doesn't move at all. And one thing I noticed, now this is top dead center, okay? This is when, this is when it explodes, all right? This is top dead center. I don't know if you can see this, and I'm going to try to get a point of view. Look inside the valve. You see the light inside there? Those valves should be shut at top dead center. I'm going to try to get some light over here, too, to show you the intake valves actually open also. So I've, I've heard a lot of people ask me, say, you know, these things don't have a lot of compression, and I don't know why, you know. But if you look inside there, you'll see it is clearly not sealing it up. See the gap in there on the exhaust and the intake at top dead center so what that's going to do is it's going to pull the charge down in all right and also it's going to pull the charge back from the exhaust down in it's going to and it's just going to be shooting it out everywhere it's not going to be you're going to have a lot of raw fuel and a lot of raw oil coming out your carburetor and coming out your exhaust for the simple fact of it's not it's not sealing it up to fire it and it's going to be using all kinds of fuel so that would that would probably answer the question why there's been so many tuning problems with these things because people can't seem to get them tuned they're, they're they say they're they're so fine i know um black la mass um when he first contacted me on his he said hey you know do, do you get a lot of oil coming out of your carburetor and i'm like well, not a lot. I know they do spit out a little, but he was having a lot of oil coming out of his carburetor. And I noticed I was getting a lot coming out of my exhaust system. And I, I, I had more coming out of my exhaust than I did my catch can, which, you know, I kind of figured that was normal. But so I investigated this rocker arm a little bit. Now, right now, both valves are open and then it's at top dead center. So these should be closed totally. So... If I back this nut off here on the top just a little bit, because it's tight now, 
Okay, if I just back it off, you can see the, watch the, watch the val valves moving up. See them moving up in the air? Okay, now there, now the valves are closed. But unfortunately, my rocker is loose. So I can't run it like that. And, you know, now I got a little bit of play in, in my wheel here. So I don't know how much play you guys have on your wheels. And this is what I determined it to be, was if you take the rocker bar off, Okay, take the screw out of it. Now, there's a, inside here, you'll see, let me get my hand in there, you'll see the rocker bar, okay? Now, if you turn this around, the valves are open all the time. You can't, they don't shut. But if you turn it around the other way, um, you know, you, I don't know if you can see the, this is kind of towards the top here. So it sets this block down towards the block. Now this is a machine surface in here. And, you know, it's all, it's not like, you see it's even powder coated and everything. You know, it's not like nobody's messed with it or nothing. So when you tighten it down, both of your valves are stuck open. So your piston charge, you're not going to have no compression, no power. That would explain why the, the power is low on these. Because these are basically... Um, like a 21 buggy style um, piston in this thing, you know, for the, the you know, the CCs of it, it, it should have a lot more power than this because, you know, I was really kind of like thrown by the, you know, four strokes have a lot of power. And I noticed the power dropping on this thing and it was because of this, you know what I mean? I tightened this down and it actually made it worse. So here's what I did. And I, you know, I even looked in the schematics. Um, that they sent me of all the breakdown of all the parts for this and there's no washer in here okay there's nothing so nothing fell out it's a flush fit right from the factory and you know i, I contacted them i i even requested hey if you guys got another motor because i need to i need to check this stuff out and even if it's a used motor i just wanted to see how much play i wanted to do some measuring between my motor and another motor because i don't have the other another motor to, to compare it to and I heard nothing from them. So, like you say, all right, well, hey, here, it is what it is. So I took this washer and, get my finger up there. You see, I, I just took a regular small three millimeter washer. It's really thin. I, I don't even know what the thickness of this thing is. And this came in one of my Tamiya kits. Um, but if you look at it, I just ground the edges flat. You know, I just put it on a, you know, put it in a pair of pliers, or vice grips or pliers, and then I use my Dremel tool and just flatten both edges to put it inside here. Now, I will I will put this in here now as a shim because it, it needs shimmed, you know. So, I noticed after I did this, I had a little bit of slop there now. I had some movement and the valves were completely closed. I'll try to put this in the head, I guess. Try to do this off camera. But bear with me for a second, guys. Get that in there. Come on. Magnetic shit and you get small little washers like that. It can be fun. Especially with guys like me, I got like sausage fingers, you know what I mean? this thing up oh, now the little washer that I put in there fits right in between the the uh, the, the the two slots you know now I'll put my rocker bar on Oop, and it fell off some bitch hold on having a little trouble here Hey, you ever try to do something really quick and it just goes bad from there? I'm trying to hurry because it's on camera. So I'm not boring you guys because I don't like to do a lot of editing and all that because I don't have a whole lot of time. So when I'm trying to figure something out. Oh. 
now. All right, we're there, I hope. Check to make sure it's not flopping around in there anywhere. Because it's really tight quarters in there all over the place, you know. So now I got the washer in there. So I'm going to tighten this down now. Just I'm going to snug it. And I'm going to put it on top dead center. Now, okay. Now I got just a little bit of movement out of my camshaft. Because this does move on here too. A little bit. Actually, there's a lot of movement on that. But So I got movement on my camshaft now. You can see the cam... Before, the cam was locked right up against the thing. Now, the only problem is this is actually going to mess with my lift. Now, when I did the video of the disassemble, I showed you guys how how much some valves opened up. Well, now I'm only getting about halfway on the valves, but the valves are closing now, and so it's not going to blow the charge back out the exhaust and the intake when the piston comes up to fire at top dead center. So this would explain why... Everybody's having runnability problems with these things because it's not getting enough compression in some of them. If the valves are staying open, it's not getting enough compression for that glow plug to ignite that fuel. Because that fuel, it, you know, it sometimes, you know, the glow plug helps it ignite. So, you know, this right here, if it, you know, if it was the um, the gasoline version with the, you know, the, the spark system in it, it would ignite anyway, and it would still do the same thing. You would have fuel blowing out everywhere. So, if you guys have maybe an opportunity to have, when you have yours down, check to see, you know, if there's any play. Because every, you know, like small block Chevys, now that's a lot of play right there because I put that washer in there. So, I'm going to have to find something even thinner than this washer to, you know, to get rid of that play. But it's better than the valves being open. You know what I mean? Is because the valves, in my opinion, should be shut. I mean, that's that's just a four-stroke motor for you. But I'm gonna try to run it like this with the uh, with this washer in here. I want to see I want to see if it's any different. If it corrected a lot of the things, even though it ain't gonna have a lot of draw in a thing, you know, and a, and a, the exhaust ain't gonna open up big like it was to let the charge out like a high-performance motor. But it may. It may bring this down to a runnability problem. The runnability problems might be gone now because I do have a full compression stroke with torque and I got sealed valves. I've got less oil blowing out anywhere because now it's not blowing the charge back. So now all I got to do is deal with what oil is coming out here. So I'm going to get on that now. But like I say, if you guys have one of these and... You know, you've had your rocker off, or if you have your motor apart, see if there's any play in your your rocker arms to your camshaft at top dead center when the when the you know the mark is down, because you know see see how much movement you got in your rocker arm because I want to know because this is this is really strange to me, but anyhow I'm gonna keep working on this and if you guys would hit me back with some of that stuff if you got the information I'd appreciate it greatly and. Uh, you guys have a good one, man. Adios.